Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. Word Balloon is brought to you by the League of Word Balloon Listeners. Coming to Kickstarter from the mind of Franco, the man behind Teen Titans Go to the Library, Faye of the Moon, and All Yeah Comics, comes the new LXT, the adversarial fighting card game, live now on Kickstarter. LXT, Lux vs. Tenebris. Imagine a loved one has been spirited away to a land of terror and torture. Would you be willing to go after them and fight through a horde of acolytes of the Dark One just to get them back? Developed as a role-playing card game that can be played multiple ways. The cards will have full-color illustrations on the front and chock-full of stamps and moves on the back. You can also get the LXT Who's Who book with origin stories and information about all the characters. Still want more? Also available is the LXT Dark Atlas book, filled with pro stories about all the baddies and illustrations from a wide selection of comic artists. There are plenty of add-ons you can purchase separately like comic books, stickers, original art from the game, and more. It's going to be a howling good time. LXT, live, now on Kickstarter. Welcome back, everybody. Time again for Word Balloon, the comic book conversation show. John Suncher is here. Always happy to welcome Mark Wade. My back pleasure. Sir. Well, feelings mutual, son. You know that. And uh, good Lord, a big flap, and it's right there in the title. Um, the question of who created Wolverine is a current topic uh, yeah. brought upon by uh, the original editor uh, at Marvel, Roy Thomas, mm -hmm. who told Herb Trippi, or well, yeah, Herb Trippi and uh, Len Wein, hey, how about a Canadian character? For right. uh, the Hulk to fight, and we know Romita Senior designed the costume, right. and we know Herb Herb drew the original two part story. Mm -hmm. Len Wein wrote the two part story, but now Roy is claiming uh, co creator credit, and Disney and Marvel are acquiescing, I guess, in the um, yeah in the new uh, Deadpool Wolverine movie. Now yeah. you're a guy yeah. that's been a writer and an editor, like Roy, right. and a publisher, so and a publisher, right. and a publisher. Yeah. So so yeah, your thoughts on the topic? Nope. Here, let me just cut right to it. No, it's the job. That is the job of an editor to throw an idea. I mean, I don't know any editor in this business. And believe me, we have been talking a lot among us the last couple of weeks. I don't know any editors in comics who haven't thrown out ideas. Here's a name. Here's an idea for a character. You know, here's something you could, here's a scene for your story. Here's, you know, I've ghosted entire, you know, pages of stories i've i've edited it just that's that's what you do it you're a staff editor you give notes you help shape the story you help create the story that is your job as an editor and if you want to have bragging rights have it absolutely i don't you know I, no one is getting their nose out of joint because roy walks around saying you know i help create wolverine you know what? You say it all you want. Put it on your tombstone. I don't care. You know, I've I, fine. I and I think we're all universally agreed on that as well. Like it's not. It it, it may be a little gauche sometimes, depending upon the credit, depending upon your involvement. But yeah, no one's going to begrudge you that. But it's the it's the official thing. It's the you know mm -hmm. contacting lawyers, making sure it's there on the on the film, making sure it's it's officially in the credits. You know, making sure that, you know, if there's any revenue from it, you know, I get a piece. Um, that's just, uh, it's, it's stolen valor is, as I think, what has everybody really pissed off. We all love Len. I mean, 
Yeah. Even people who, even fans who didn't really know Len and never met Len really liked Len. He just was so personal a guy. His work was so warm. He was such a creative person and always one, by the way, to give credit wherever it was due. And it's just, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen an editor come, you know, 50 years down the road after everybody else is dead to contest it and say, you know, I should be officially credited as a, as part of the creation here. That's the job, dude. Have you ever been in that capacity where you, if using the Roy Thomas scenario, yeah. can yeah. say, "Oh yeah, by the way, I, you know, would you mind uh, vocalizing any?" It, it, it sounds trivial character? because compared to Wolverine, all of it sounds trivial, right? But you know, and, and I don't, and I'm being, I'm being circumspect here only because I don't want it to sound like I'm treading on the credits of the people who actually did the writing and the drawing. So let's just say they're their characters, their Legion characters, there are, you know, I, I, Brian Augustine was always really good about giving me verbal credit for, you know, helping with Gotham, my gaslight. And, and I was his editor. It was my, it was my basic notion. He expanded it. He said, Brian, Hey, Batman a hundred years ago in, you know, Victorian Gotham go, which is not a whole lot different than, a uh, Canadian guy named Wolverine go. It would never occur to me to ask DC for some official credit on this. It would never occur to me to, you know, make sure that my name is in the film credits of the adapted, you know, animated or whatever. Uh, and that's just one example. And that's just me. And there are, and, and yes, I've been an editor and a publisher forever off and yeah. on. Yeah. I could, I spent a lot of time in that chair. Um, and there have been plenty of instances like that where you're just throwing ideas back and forth. You're just trying to get the book out the door and you're having fun knocking ideas back and forth because that really is part of the fun of the job for most of us is the, the volleying the ball back and forth. You know, the, the, can you top this? That's part of the real fun of being in comics and in any kind of creative capacity, even if you're an editor. So all this to say, yes. You know, and I've spoken to other editors who have similar stories and it's not there's their stories are not mine to tell. But Understood. but, you know, they did this or they created this, you know, they quote unquote created this character or they they did as much on this. They did more on this than than you're supposed to do as an editor. Really, I suppose, you know, I gave this guy the concept for the for the series, that kind of stuff. But I've yet I mean. Everyone in comics has been talking about this for a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of creative people, past and present, weighing in on this. No one, no one has taken Roy's side on this. That should tell you something. And like I told you, I told you before we started, I, like, I don't, I, this is not, me teeing up to just, you know, beat on Roy for half an hour. Cause that's, I, I, nothing's accomplished by that at this point. It's not like Marvel's going to change their mind. It's right. not like Roy's going to change his mind. It is, it is about the fact that Len deserves that credit. Those are the standards by which we have done business in mainstream comics since 1935. Have there been exceptions every once in a while? I'm sure there have. You know, are there, you know, would I argue about them too? Probably. One that I wondered about back in the 50s mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. Showcase 4 came out, the, the yeah. Barry Allen Flash. Right. And, right. you know, again, written by Robert Kaniger, mm -hmm. drawn by Carmine Infantino. But I know Julie Schwartz obviously yeah. started with, hey, let's update the Flash. Yeah. You know, and again, I don't know further than that. And I've also known reading things like Roy Thomas's own Alter Ego magazine. Mm -hmm. That it might be a little murky in terms of how much Julie did. I don't know if you ever, and I don't, not only did you ever talk to Julie about it, but even further, given the fat Flash TV show and the Flash movie, I don't know. I'd have to go back in uh, Zapruder film the credits <laughs> right. and, see, and see if Julie is listed as a, I mean, they don't even call them co-creators in those instances. It's always right. special thanks or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. But that was the closest thing that 
immediately came to mind when this Wolverine thing came up. I think that's plenty fair. I, I, I don't really see much difference between, hey, we need a new Flash. And, hey, we need a character named Wolverine. I don't really see much difference there in terms of that is the function of the job. Again, it's the reason that we're all talking about it still is that it is from an outside perspective, I think, from a, from a layman's perspective, maybe a little more complicated because you can say, yeah, if Roy you know, was home at 10 o'clock at night and suddenly this idea popped into his head and he wasn't behind the desk at the time, then yeah, sure, you know, he's co-created or whatever. But again, that that's a function of of something else altogether. It's not the custom by which we do stuff in comics and hasn't been. It sets a really dangerous precedent because great, well then should I go after stuff? You know, should other editors go after stuff that they chipped in? You know, Dan Raspler, I'm sure, had a, a few ideas for Kingdom Come. You know, let is he filing suit, you know, to have his name on the book? It's, it's just, it also rankles, I think, creative people like myself because Roy is an agent of the company. And this is and when we've been fighting so hard for creative people, freelancers, to get credit where it is deserved. To some degree, this also feels like a clawing back of the rights because, you know, we had to fight this so hard to get here. And Roy, as an editor of the company, as a staff editor, is, you know, is clawing back. Well, obviously, uh, Jabez Creed agrees with you. The creators had to fight so hard for decades to get this recognition. Then you have Roy trying to claw it back for the company. And a couple other comments from specifically Bob Breedle, who agrees with you and says editors add value, shouldn't get co-credit. More like I suggested the name and that he be Canadian, which is co-creating. I, I think where I, I think here's what I would give. Here's what I would give you. If you look at other things that Roy has taken some credit for, Brother Voodoo, Luke Cage, uh, Ghost Rider. The Vision. Yeah. 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 If you go back and if you go back and look at those books, as I did, and look at the original credits. Every one of them has a little arrow beside the credit box that says with creative contributions from Roy Thomas and artist or whatever. You know what? That's to me, that's even, to me, that's even that's over the line. But I'm not going to die on that hill. Like if that's you know, it doesn't really bother me that much. It's it's still not industry standard, but it goes to the idea that you know, Roy is very credit conscious. Yeah, and again, we mentioned those other characters that have been exploited in TV and film, and Roy has admitted in that Forbes article that uh, Bob, Rob Salkowitz did that, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, he was compensated for those things. And that's what – that's what, and listen, man, much like yourself, I have tremendous respect for Roy Thomas, the editor and the writer, yeah. and I have and, – and all he created and contributed to both, uh, both universes, Marvel and DC. This so, yeah, it's like, yeah. you know – why? Why now? This is, yeah, this is one of the things that, that actually genuinely saddens me, is that here is a guy, and I've known Roy for 40 years, and I've known Roy as a creative person just sitting on the, you know, sitting under a tree reading comics for 55 years or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, here's a guy who was pivotal in comics history so many times. You know, the, the, I think the biggest contribution was probably Star Wars, right? Bring in the Star Wars property, get some Marvel comics at a time when they desperately needed something and nobody thought anything of it. And it ended up being this amazing home run, right? That just, it really changed the game for Marvel and for the industry. Awesome. Good on you. You know, Conan, same thing. You're bringing Conan to comics. Nobody thought this would work. Stan didn't think it was going to work. It didn't work for the first couple of three months, but it caught on. And now look, you know, there's a billion jillion Conan comics out there. And that's made a lot of money for a lot of people. And I think that's great. Good on you. So, you know, you created Ultron with, you know, with, with John Buscema or who, Barry Windsor Smith. I forget which one of the two. And, yeah, you know, you created, you co-created the vision. You co-created, you know, so many of these characters. That is, no one can take that away from you. No one can take it away. 
that let that be your legacy. Let that be your legacy, not the you don't want to leave people with the last memory of of your career being. Uh, yeah, he came along with a shovel and tried to dig up Len Wee, you know. I'm with you, man. No, it really, and and, and again, yeah, Roy, Roy's in his 80s, and it's it's not a good look. And again, for a guy whose body of work needs no apologies, and of course, right. and we all we all give it up to him. A couple more comments from everybody. Uh, Henry says, in my opinion only, Roy Thomas and John Romita Sr. first created Wolverine's design. Len Wein and Herb Trippi used the character and expanded on him in Hulk 180 through Hulk 182. All four should share credit. Okay, well, again. Uh, I understand you're not alone. I've seen other people, right. uh, you know, since bringing up this subject. I, I republished uh, a panel I did at Terrificon a few years ago with Roy and Susanna Flores, a psychologist, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, got, again, Roy, Roy laid out his claim. Now, that was even six years ago. This is like 2018 or 2019. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of kind of interesting. Sterling how, Gates, hey, man. How long had Len been dead then? Exactly, man. About a year. Exactly. Yeah. Ugh. And then and Herb too, and I, you know, I I forget when Herb passed away, but yeah. two real gentlemen, man, and just the sweetest down earth guys, Len and Herb, and uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Sterling Gates says the Flash movie did a detailed on screen yes. letter, which read the original, uh, well, read the Flash created by Harry Lampert and Gardner Fox. Obviously, that's the Jake Eric version, mm -hmm. and then the Barry Allen version by Robert Kaniger and Carmine Infantino. Again, right. makes sense. And so, by the way, up top. They were in the opening credits, not the closing credits. So I'm so impressed by everyone wow. who was behind that decision. And and also I remember, and forgive me, but I remember uh, the red carpet that uh, Hugh Jackman did. And, yeah. and and Roy was there, and he had Roy stand up, and, yeah. and Hugh said, I would not be here and would not have the career I have if it wasn't for that man. And thankfully, because we, we both know uh, Len had that fire at his house, and also, Len was always in really poor health. God bless him. Yep. And and Marvel did right by him. And I don't know yep. how much money he gave him, but they definitely gave him a significant amount of money. Yeah, they did right. Sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I wonder if some people are writing in, and again, I, I appreciate that comment that the, the fellow made about all four or whatever. Yeah. And you, I'm, I, again, we're, it probably sounds like we're splitting hairs to people who aren't in comics. But, do they get bragging rights? Yes. You know, do they get official co-credit? That's a different issue. I'm with you. You know, Mike Jones, uh, and I like this analogy. He says it seems similar to script doctor roles in movie making. The unwritten code is they don't get credit. Chris McQuarrie has repeatedly said he will not discuss movies he had that role on. Well, I know um, comedians that were script doctors for things mm -hmm. like Ratatouille and things like that, that it's like, oh, no, I helped. And it's yeah. literally, it's just, I help. You don't see their names on the screen. Right. They obviously got paid for whatever contribution they made. But yeah, yeah it's like, no, you, you don't you, you don't get that co-creator credit. So. I think a more apt analogy, and I have to give Perp Usyk some props on this one. I'm going to paraphrase and mangle. But, you know, if I hire a contractor to build me a new driveway and I need it to be this wide and this long and I want it to have gold bricks and I want to make sure that you don't, uproot the oak tree in the middle of the yard when you build the thing and it's got to come in this semicircle in front of my house i don't get to say that i co-built the driveway with you yeah no i get it man absolutely uh caesar says i've never heard of an editor getting co-created sta uh, status jim riddle i saw where a kid had submitted a wolverine character to foom yep that, uh thomas said it i didn't hear about that yeah man. let's break oh let's break this down Let's break this down. Do you, are you aware of this? Yeah, oh yeah. A uh, fellow named Andy Owens, a uh, fan back in the day. Foom was the in-house Marvel fan magazine. Friends, so friends of old Marvel, Foom. Exactly. So that was, you know, if you were a big fan of Marvel, you get a subscription to this magazine that was produced in-house by Marvel. They did a character creation contest for fans. And one kid wrote in with a character named Wolverine. And they used the illustration and they gave him a, you know, a bone, you know, they gave him a shout out in the magazine. Sure. You know, good for you. It, did it look like Wolverine? No. Was it a, you know, a guy named Wolverine with claws? Yes. Um, that was, you know, about a year and a half before we have Wolverine. 
I'm not saying there are so many people, there are a lot of people who are rushing to that going, see, see, it all came from there. He did all was stolen from Andy Owens. I'm not going to go you that far. I'm not going to give you that necessarily because I know how creative stuff works in comics and it's, it could just be coincidence. It really sure. genuinely could. People come up with, we we're, we have to come up with ideas, rapid fire every minute of every day. And we don't all read Foom magazine, you know, or what have you. It's, and there's, you know, there's been plenty of times when I've had an idea, but somebody else across town has had the same idea at the same time it happens. So there's that, but people are latching onto this. So there was a site online that I don't want to name because they're, they do a good investigative job about this stuff, but there is an element of smug arrogance to the site that makes my teeth hurt. So <laughs> if you want to go look, you can find them. But they ran an interview with uh, Andy Owens, and I, I read it actually this afternoon. And oh. Andy's like, and he's like, you know, statute of limitations, there's nothing. They got big lawyers. I've made my peace with it. It, you know, what are you going to do? And pe so people are running him, trying to gin him up into, you know, being a champion. He's like, look, dude, that was 50 years ago. I was a kid. You know, I, I have my own job now. It things happen, and I, I love that attitude about it. I mean. How yeah. refreshing in a world in which everybody is scrabbling to get a little exactly a little bit of the little bit of the dodge. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, and I you know I can't blame them, especially yeah. if you're going up against like Disney or Warner Brothers. Brother, take all the money you can. Um but yeah, yeah so that's yeah, that's the Andy Owen story. That's interesting. You know, yeah. and sadly, I think this person, and I'm not gonna name him mm -hmm. because I really hate the way that he does business. But I believe someone that works for uh, Roy mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. made the claim that that Ben Cooper Spider Man. Oh, is a Christ in a birch bark canoe? Yes. I had, <laughs> I was, had, was prior to Stan and Steve Ditko creating Spider Man. I had this lecture from this guy. And if anything illustrates my point better than saying that just because something somebody said something over here in 1962 doesn't necessarily mean that somebody copied it in 1966. Is that one of Roy's guys cornered me at a convention, showed me a Ben Cooper Halloween costume from the late fifties or maybe sixty or whatever? It was it was certainly before Amazing Fantasy fifteen that right. was Spider Man, and it kind of looked vaguely like it had spider webs because again, if you're going to be a character named Spider Man, sure, there's not many sartorial choices to make here. You're going to use the webs. <laughs> And convinced, man, convinced, man, convinced that Ditko lifted the design from the character off of this Ben Cooper costume, presuming. So I just you have to get yourself in the in the headset, in the mindset that there is Steve Ditko handing out candy one Halloween, which <laughs> already were beyond my imagination, but handing out candy and, and then some kid steps up with a spider-man costume and as he's putting you know milk duds into this kid's bag he's like hey I, you maybe you got something here kid i'll file that away bullshit bullshit yep. yeah it's it is it is so it is everybody's rushing to be a, to everybody's always rushing to be the guy who found something out about history that nobody knew before right Everybody wants that credit. Like I found something that nobody ever found out before. Um, it is rampant in comics fandom when they find older characters from like Stan and Jack's mystery books or, or you know, horror books that are that have a name that 12 years later was reused by somebody else in some other comic. And it becomes, well, that, that character was a prototype of this character. No, no, that, that presumes that somebody was paying attention. No, that presumes that this was some sort of official test run on a character. No, it's not a prototype. It just meant that people have ideas. We crank out hundreds and hundreds of stories a month in this industry. That's going to happen. So it always tickles me when it's like, well, Aunt May and Uncle Ben, they were characters in the Steve Ditko story. So clearly they were prototypes of Aunt May and, and Uncle Ben in Spider-Man several years later. Or, or somebody just liked the names Ben and May. 
I'm you with you, man. Could judge. You, yeah. you know what's crazy? Yeah. And this is more dead on. And I kind of wish Rodney Dangerfield was still alive. Yeah. But we yeah. comedy nerds know his real name was Jack Roy. Right. And yeah. I was listening to an old Jack Benny show mm -hmm. from the 40s. Well before Jack Roy was doing stand-up. I don't even know what Jack Roy was doing in the 40s. But uh, they uh, he was in Palm Springs, and there was an MC on a stage, and I want to introduce one of our favorite stars of not only radio, but the movies as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Rodney Dangerfield. And that blew my mind, because I had never heard prior to seeing Rodney on The Tonight Show. Yeah. But... There, there was, and there was a character named Rodney Dangerfield. Maybe that's where Jack Roy got it, but I'm sure whatever that Jack Benny writer was would not go, yeah, I created Rodney Dangerfield. No, of course, of course not. <laughs> it, is, it's, it, is, it is human nature to try to make connections between things that don't seem to be connected. If that, yeah. if that nature didn't exist, conspiracy theories would not exist. There is that nature. It is comforting to be able to think that things connect when they don't really, especially sure. in, in a world that gets more tumultuous and less fact driven every single day. The idea that you can connect two things together that maybe nobody else is seeing, but you can take credit for making that connection. I get that. That's human nature. I'm with you. So, but you know, I really, I would, I would bet my life that at no point did Steve Ditko see a Halloween costume on this front porch or at Kresge and go, Eureka. I'm with you, man. Dan Jurgens joining us. I'm so, Dan, it means a lot that you're watching. Great chat. Hey, Mark, thanks, Dan. Hey, Dan. Right? Absolutely. Would add that Roy could have suggested new character named Wolverine, Canadian background to 10 different writers and it would have resulted in 10 very different characters. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. creation is not linear. Ideas move all over the place, with often with nuance, until realized. Suggestion is not creation ever. Well, in fact, I remember when Ditko, uh, you know, when the first Spider-Man movie came out, mm -hmm. Ditko had that essay where he's like, an idea is not creation until it manifests, especially in comics, as a fully formed illustration and story. That's when creation happens. Right. And, you know, yeah, and that was his one and only, I think, comment on creating Spider-Man in right. recent, you know, years. I mean, that was 20 years ago or whatever. Right. But in but, reverse yeah. that, in reverse that, in Stan's point of view, I mean, if I can read a quote real quick, Stan's, Stan's this is a quote from an interview talking about Stan. Uh, it says, Stan talked about people like Stephen J. Canal and television, saying if Canal came up with a general idea and wants a few people running around doing this and that and calls them the A-team, he's created that. It says created by Stephen Canal. And I said, yes, and again, I'm quoting the interview. And I said, yes, but that's a function of power, not of creativity. It means Stephen Cannell has the power to say he created that thing alone and other and people walk into, into that by agreeing to sell their work for work for hire or for other financial deals. But it doesn't mean he really created the whole thing just because it says so on paper. That's a legal thing. It's caused by his power. You either play by his rules or you don't. End quote, Roy Thomas. Interesting. Absolutely, man. Very, so very. You, you don't get it both ways, Roy. Absolutely. Uh, Bob, Bob Breedel says Mark Wade has an encyclopedic brain. Well, that's why I'm talking to him, man. He's <laughs> yeah. the, fa the fan name from an old issue of Foom. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's great. Um, no, I, 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 I really, I hear you, man. And uh, let's see, Mike, did you have a pre? Oh, well, uh, and again, Stanley says, why was this addressed? Why wasn't this addressed? Decades ago, it I know, was. I know, I know, I know, because Len wasn't dead yet. That's why. Well, that's true. Well, and that's another thing, uh, truly, Mark, that so many people have done research reading comics interview, likely mm -hmm. amazing heroes, some of the other great comic interview magazines that we've discussed that you were a contributor to in Amazing Heroes. And no, there's chapter and verse from Herb Trimpey, from Len Wein, from Roy himself. Saying, and again, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially, yeah, I gave the idea to Len, but Len, Len, and uh, Len and Herbert yeah. carried the water, you know, and and they're the ones who really did it. And I mean, contradicting what he's what he is now saying. Yeah, it's uh, amazing yeah. how sharp your memory can suddenly become fifty years on. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, Henry, 
Didn't Kirby also say that he created Spider-Man? It looked like a Captain America guy with no shield and a web gun. Well, yeah, and in fact, I know a book that um, I want to say Joe Simon's son. There yeah. was a Silver yeah. Scarab character, and you yeah. uh, tell me yeah. if I'm wrong and correct. No, that's me. A, you, yeah, but you know, you got it. Go, go, go. And yeah, and that, and it's like yeah. So uh, you know, in fact, you know, that's where Spider-Man came from. Well, we also know that that cover uh, image from Amazing Fantasy 15 was a Jack Kirby cover, right? that Steve had drawn a cover that Stan didn't like. And so Jack came in at the last second and redrew the cover. I think that, you know, this is, again, a murky area. Did, did, did Jack really create enough of what you would consider to be Spider-Man to be, to have a co-credit creator in the thing? I don't know. I wasn't there. You don't know you weren't there. Yeah. They're all dead. We don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But and no one wants to take anything away from anybody. Look, I, I, I say this, often, which is that credit is not a finite resource, which sounds paradoxical given what I've been arguing here. But when I say credit is not a finite resource, I generally mean that, look, if you, if you help me do something, I, you know, I'll give you credit. If you, if I help you do something, you know, it's just kindness. It's just general kind. Give me, give me credit as it, as it is due. And if you don't, that's fine too. But if you do, that's nice. But it is better given than taken, right? It's, yeah. it's one thing to give credit to somebody. It is, it is a different thing to go the other direction and take it, um, even if you think you deserve it. It is just, I told you coming in the door, I really didn't want to just be, you know, dogpiling on this guy for an hour and I really don't because again nothing, nothing's accomplished by it nothing's going to change all we're doing right now I, is just venting our spleens as a comic community <laughs> because it gets not I, you know what's going to happen out of this people are more editors are going to you know if they're going to be new rules laid down I don't probably not you know what do you want to come out of this nothing's going to come out of this so it just I think also Legitimately, those of us who have enormous respect for Roy's career and his contributions are disappointed by this. Yeah, man. No, I, I'm absolutely with you. And it's funny because uh, Aston says Jack Kirby has so many important creations already. Forcing a new connection is unnecessary. Again, same could be said about Roy Thomas. Dozens of important characters for Marvel and DC that he can hang his hat on and say, absolutely. I did that. And we Absolutely. all stand back and applaud. I mean, that's that's the thing that sucks. Like, I, man, literally, first year, 19 years of Word Balloon come May 10th. Yeah. Roy Thomas was always on my wish list of, please, I want to talk to this guy. And I finally did a couple times. And I'm really glad I did. Because from a, being aware of what he wrote, I mean, I bought that Treasury Edition Avenger reprint print that had the Vision story and the Ultron story. That's right. probably the first stuff I read of Roy's. And being an Invaders fan as I was in the 70s, that fantastic series, an all-star squadron. And yeah. it's, again, so many so many things that, that he created. Manuel, questioning the number of creators involved in the birth of a character could lead to an infinite loop. Absolutely, as uh, layers yeah. continue to be added to the characters by subsequent artists. DJ, Roy worked for the media company. A suggestion to freelancers by the editor is not creation. He's getting paid to work weekly, freelancers or not. And Mike Jones, apart from the very distasteful side of this, is the wider impact that the precedence opens up the floodgates for every editor to do the same thing. And there editor, you go. I guess I guess if you know every editor who has deep enough pockets where they feel like taking over taking on Disney or Warner Brothers, uh, or have a you know a Saul Goodman lawyer who's willing to work on the contingency. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be stunned to see other claims come out of this. I would, but man, if, if you care anything about leaving a good taste in people's mouth when they say your name then you knock it off. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, it's, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a, a very interesting few months for it. Although the gen certainly, Outside of our comic fan sphere, mm -hmm. nobody's gonna give a shit. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're gonna see and go, okay, great. And even in you know, innocent conventioners, 
are going to be, oh, it's going to create co-create a Wolverine. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. Whatever. You no, know, I, yeah, I explain it to my fiance and her eyes glaze over. Um, it, let's let's break this down on another level for a second. It's, it's not endemic to Roy, but this is also something I've been noticing in the last 10 years or so as I, you know, reach an age where it's like, you know, maybe I don't have to do this forever. Um, there is a yearning on everyone's part, right? John, John, when you die, you want word balloon to be a legacy thing for you. Right? You want people to mention that when they talk about you, you want people to remember you because of the things you have done. It's all of us want that. Everyone wants that. Sure. And <laughs> the older you get, the more mindful of it you are, the more conscious of it you are, the more it begins to be a reality that, you know, you're not going to be here forever. And you'd like certain things to be on your tombstone other than, you know, he wrote kingdom come. Um, <laughs> you know. Now, if it, yeah, my, my tombstone inscription is going to be, he didn't think it through. That's just shut up. That, 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 <laughs> I, but that's long decided, but uh, Mark Wade, he didn't think it through. But it's so it is. It's again, we get back to human nature. I'm trying to be kind. I'm trying to be understanding. I, I get that in your twilight years, as I will be before I blink, you, know, you, you, <laughs> you want to feel like you left a footprint. Yeah, yeah. And it's just what's maddening is, do you already left an enormous footprint? The, an enormous footprint. The only, you know, the only thing you're doing here is you're, you know, putting your shoe in somebody else's footprint. Yeah. No, I'm with you, man. Absolutely. Jurgens, good, good uh, point. Yeah. Martin Goodman takes, if Martin Goodman takes note of Justice League sales numbers and tells Stan Lee to create a book of with a team of superheroes, does that make him a co-creator of Fantastic Four? Of course not. Yeah. Hey, Dan, I don't hey, know. Yeah, right. Hey, Dan, certainly Mike Harlan in all your years working on Superman must have thrown out a character name, an idea, a plot notion. He must have. That's the job. Was there any, I'm asking so you can type in your response, but was there at any Please, time Dad. that Mike said, I deserve official co-credit on this thing? Sure. Sure. Whether it's gangbuster or, you know, whatever. Yeah. During yeah. that, during that uh, period where, uh, where Dan, Barbara Kiesel and uh, Louise and, uh, yeah. Everybody was writing Superman. No, that's a very that's a very good point, Dan. I hope you will comment on that in the chat because I would I would love that answer. By the way, uh, the Batman uh, Part Two, his Black yeah. Label story with Mike Perkins came out this week, and God, I love that story. It's so good, and it's so feels like 1939. It really could have been uh, an in between story between Detective 27 and 28. It really is a good read. It really, by the way, I, I got to tell you something, John. The reason that all of us professionals join your program halfway through like this is because we're actually hoping for a plug. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all that, I'm just, I'm, I'm giving down. I know, right. but I love so, it. Really, it's, but it's, it's praise well deserved. Mike Perkins doing a great job. I wish I were smart enough to remember the colorist name off the top of my head, but also spl splendid work. So. Well, and I'll, I'll be honest, man, I, and I asked both Dan and Mike this without any meanness attached to it. But I'm like, with the copyright, with the public domain thing coming up, mm -hmm. it's kind of smart that DC is doing this because I think it's going to make things that much harder yes. for somebody to walk over and go, well, here's my generic uh, Batman, Bruce Wayne, Detective 27 story. And DC can go, yeah, that's cute. But nine years ago, we made this and, right. uh, and the copyright's right there. So yep. now what? And in fact, I wonder, I remember the great, and I know you do too, the Tom DeHaven Superman book yeah. that essentially takes place in 38 and 39. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, God, and I love that book. It's a fantastic, if people yeah. haven't read that, you got to read it. a great take on Superman, yeah. Tom but DeHaven I wonder if, Superman, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if uh, with, uh, I don't, I have no idea what level of success this Batman story is having as a black label story, but it's like, God, I would love to see them do the same thing with Superman. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, here, Dan says, 
Uh, right. You're right, like any good editor. Mike, like any good editor, offered many great thoughts. And no, didn't ask for credit. And uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I've outed you all. And in I've women, because Gail, Gail does it too. Right. And every now and then, some of the other women creators will pop in. Guys and women, I cannot tell you how much it delights me that you yeah. guys do pop in and make a comment while I'm talking to somebody else. It means a yeah. lot. It really means a lot. So we're thank just, you. We, for that. we just want your attention. So <laughs> all, you all always that, have. I think. Um, I, tell me if I beat. I think we've beaten this horse yeah. to death at this point. So well, and I'm going to go to something else, Caesar. And I didn't realize this. Are you wrapping up your uh, Shazam run, or have you already done it? I have already wrapped it up. Alas, uh, Dan was going to move on to something else, and he even Dan, who is faster than light, can only draw a couple of books a month at best, and so. Shazam had to go. And and if Dan was leaving, I felt like my best work was going to be with Dan. You know, I did, I did, you know, work on three issues after Dan with terrific artists. But by that time, the decision was kind of already made by me anyway. It just, you know, I don't, I don't want to be the guy who gets the book canceled 12 issues in and people go, Oh, well, it was all Dan, you know? So, um, how many issues then when you're, when you were finished, is it 12? I, or, did, uh... I did nine all, I did nine all together. Okay. But, um, Josie Campbell. Oh God, please. God, please let it be Josie Campbell that I just said by name. God, please. It's taking it over from here. Cool. Please, please God, let it be, let, let that be the right name. Um, you know what? I, we're going to look right now. We're going to look Fair right enough. now live on the air um, as to who wrote the Shazam that came out last week. Uh, and if any of your readers can, join in here and help me and save my ass. <laughs> so this, yes. Oh my God. Please. While you're, while you're looking it up, I want to acknowledge Salkowitz and, and Rob, we assure you, we did, uh, we did mention the Forbes article, which was fantastic. Yes. Coming in late, catching up. Great conversation. Rob, we're due for a new talk and uh, I'm glad you're watching. So thank you. And I'm glad you're out there because you always have a great, honest, critical eye on the entire nerd sphere. Yes. So, uh, I, and I, and I applaud you for going to Roy and even getting, and again, because I want to hear Roy's side of the story. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Mike, I mean, that is, that is, you're doing the right thing. And yes, it is Josie Campbell. Thank God. Oof. Um, but all that back to Rob for just a second. Yeah. Sure. Rob, you were wrong on NFTs, but other than that, you've been <laughs> exemplary on, in, in your reporting on comics and it's valued. Um, rewinding, backing up a little bit. Josie Campbell takes over Shazam with issue 10, just came out last week. Really good, really fun. Thoroughly enjoy what she's doing. That's that's fantastic to hear. Uh, Sal Avenatti joining us, uh, representative of Alex Ross. Thank you, Mark, for your amazing contribution to our Kingdom Come documentary. Can't wait to see it, everybody. Also, uh, thank you, John, for your magnificent interview. Oh, that means a lot. Yeah, I'm a talking head on that thing, too. That's right. Get, Oh, seriously, like Alex and Sal are incredibly kind to me when it comes to access to Alex and then Sienkiewicz and others that uh, Sal represents. So, oh, that's great, man. The screening coming at uh, San Diego. Yes. Wow. wow. I'll be looking for my invite. I, uh, I awesome. can't wait to see it. Great. That's fantastic. Oh, man. No, I'm, I'm very, very excited. Um, for, those of you who, for those of you who are listening and not watching, Sal just announced that they're going to premiere. They, they hope to premiere – the Alex Ross documentary, the Kingdom Come documentary at San Diego this year. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for covering my ass with that. <laughs> that's right. No, that's, that's amazing. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mike Jones, the Marvel of the seventies, early eighties was rife with writer editors. hundred percent. Very yeah. true. Very, very true. Yeah. Uh, and and even into the nineties. Right. And you know what? If you're a writer editor, I'll give you that too. If you wrote the story, I'll give it to you. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, people are excited for the Kingdom Come documentary. And all that's good to hear, man, because I don't know if oh, I'm going to be in San Diego. So that's, uh, that's wonderful to hear. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very excited for this. I want to ask you while we got time, and, and everybody, yeah. please jump in if you've got questions about other things that Mark is currently writing or greatest hits or whatever. But, um, you know, uh, 52, I, uh, I really think that was such a significant story. And, you know, you, Jeff – uh, Grant and Greg uh, right, all working right. in concert. I mean, you know, that 
that was such a, I mean, good Lord, it was such an epic story. And they've tried to do other weekly stories since, but there really was something about it being, I guess, I mean, f- at least first in my perspective, I can't think of anything that was like that. Nothing uh, well, like the continuing <laughs> Superman story that the Superman group were doing uh, yeah. during yeah. and post uh, Doomsday. That's so there true. was that. That's but, fair. I mean, I think, epic, yeah, the difference just being that this was a, envisioned to be a story with a concrete beginning, middle, and end. Um, and uh, boy, what a left turn you took here, John, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> screech 52. That's okay. I'll talk about yeah. it. All right. Um, but yeah, it's the, the missing, I tell you, the missing ingredient here, and this is to cast zero aspersions on any editors who worked following Steve on this book or any, or any of the other weekly books, but Steve Wacker. Uh, was our editor on that book. And that was the secret sauce, man. Because you get four of us in a room and we all have ideas and we're all jamming well together. I mean, that, that thank God there was no ego in that room at all, which was so pleasant, made everybody open and very eager to throw out ideas. And Keith Gibbon was there and, and yes. you know, and, and J.G. Jones was there throwing in every once in a while. But what made that room work and what made that book work is that Steve comes from improv. That is his background, improv comedy. And what is the rule of, of improv, John? It is yes and. It of is course. Saying, yes and. What comes next? Yes and. That yes. Goes to no, which is just a screeching halt. And nobody in that room ever said, no, nope. it was just, you know, yes and. And you run the idea out until it either becomes brilliant or, or it flames out. And then you move on to something else. But that was the magic that Steve brought to the room that tied it all together. Understood. No, that's great. And I know uh, Siglain obviously took over. Yeah, uh, and Siglain did a, did a great job. It's, it was a thankless job. He did a yeah. great job. But Steve set the tone. Fair enough. That's cool. You know, um, I know that, and it's driving me nuts, uh, he's been working with Hickman and company on Hickman's whole sci-fi yeah. universe that he created at Substack and everything. And yeah, I haven't had, I haven't had Steve on uh, for a long time. And it's like, dude, please come back. Oh for yeah. That yeah. Moment, Next time I talk back. to him, I will, I will remind him that he needs to come back on. Oh, thanks brother. No, I, I appreciate that. Oh, Alex Sanchez. All right. Let's talk about something new. Yeah. How did absolute power come about your new, your new event? There you go. We can talk about this because we've already announced it in previews and stuff. Um, speaking of things that Dan was going to move on to do other than Shazam, that would be this. And, the idea was sort of the, the basic idea was gestated by uh, oh uh oh the basic idea was gestated by DC editorial uh oh yes I guess I, I guess I know who gets credit now co oh, creators yes indeed yeah, I, my co my co creators on this book you know um it it w- it just it would bounce back and forth I I, I Chip Zdarsky had been t- tinkering with it and. A bunch of other DC, DC writers, everybody who, you know, Tom Taylor, Tom King, everybody, you know, Scott Snyder, everybody had sort of taken a, a shot at this thing and couldn't wrestle it to the ground for whatever reason. And I'm not saying that I'm Hercules when they aren't wrestling the line to the ground and they aren't. What I'm saying is they they solved so many problems for me that by the time I got to this story, I was able to, I think, wrestle it to the ground and make something of it with Dan. And, you know, we, the basic idea is Amanda Waller wins. Amanda Waller, who has been out to get rid of superheroes for a long time. She finally wins taking all their powers, taking all their resources, taking all she knows their secret identity. She knows everything. She has every bit of leverage to hold over them. And that's where our story begins. And then it is a story of, okay, well, what happens now? What are heroes in the DC universe if you don't have heat vision and super strength? What is the reaction of the man on the street to the idea that, yes, you know, Superman's not around, which is terrible. On the other hand, you know, super villains fighting in my neighborhood does not make my house collapse. So this is an issue too. You know, there's, there's yeah. a lot of philosophical stuff we can build out of here. I don't want to give any more than that away, but I will say it's four issues, four 30 page issues. Uh, Dan is just doing astounding work it is a cast of characters rifling anything george perez ever drew god save dan 
and Dan is up to the task and adding. Here's this thing with, that is in common with George, which is that I will ask for 15 people on this page and I will get 20 because he just likes drawing Catwoman or whatever. It's like, <laughs> I haven't drawn Mento. Let's put Mento in here. You're awesome. Great. Love that about Dan. <laughs> That's amazing, man. When does it start? I want to say June. Let's say June. Okay. All right. There you go. Another guy that got to get out, Dan Moore. And I know I've said that before as well, but I, there's a guy that you can help me uh, connect I'll, with. I'll do my best. I mean, he's a, he's I, terrific. I, and I know how busy, clearly I know how busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because he's got a Kirby stack of assignments that he has to do every month. And all he does is deliver. So yeah, well, that's, it's, that's it's, amazing. It's he's a machine, this guy. What, you know, uh, that's, and that's great. And I know we've been building towards uh, Waller and, yeah. and having this, this status quo moment. Um, God, we, you know, I, I've, I've given it up to Ostrander so many times yeah. for creating yep. her, and it's such a, it's such a wonderful character. And I remember that fantastic Suicide Squad cover in the '80s, where uh, just like the, uh, the governor of Arizona scolding Obama and stuff, right. get Amanda Waller right in Batman's face, and just yep. you know whatever. And it's like, yeah, man, don't mess with Amanda Waller. Do not she mess with Amanda Waller. She, you know, one of the things that everybody's been amenable to about this book is it's it's me writing the main book and and some of the other side stuff, but you know, other writers obviously coming in and doing you know a, a tie in here, a tie in there, and we're all on the same page about we are working hard to make Amanda not a mustache twirling villain. That's the easiest thing to do is to make is to make her just you know yeah. Lex Luthor or whatever. I, it's it's more interesting to. I have a line in one of the issues where some other villain says, okay, well, you know, we've, you know, we've got the hero. Should we start targeting their, their loved ones and their friends to keep them in line? And Amanda says, those are, those are people. Those are civilians. We, those are the people we are trying to protect. I'm not a sociopath. And that, that's really what we're trying to get out of Amanda is that it's not, completely black and white with her and that she's just very definite vision of what a world without superheroes would look like, but it doesn't mean she wants to be a super villain. I'm with you. No, I get it. Um, I, that's, that's amazing. Now this is funny because I'm actually talking to Brian Hitch on Friday, but Aston wanted to know <laughs> if there an update on last days of Lex Luthor coming along, coming along. Okay. Fair enough. It's, I know. I, I, soon, I swear to God, soon, you know, what no, I agree with that. yeah. Yeah. And again, I mean, I, you know, I, and I know, I know Hitch is in the midst of ghost machine with, uh, with Jeff yeah. and what Jeff's doing and everything. He's, so yeah, he, 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 with the exception of a couple of tweaks on a couple of panels, he's done, he's been done for a while. Okay. And that's what I was wondering. And I, there like I go. said, they right there. So Kevin Nolan has pages and he's, he's chunking away and our cool. color working on the second issue. Yeah, I mean, we will not, we will certainly not see the delay between two and three that we've seen between one and two. The idea is to, you know, boom, 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 get them out. We may even reprint issue one, you know, the month before just to ramp up. Wouldn't, the yeah, I don't know. Wouldn't hurt. Absolutely wouldn't yeah. hurt. Um, let's see. Uh, and who's editing Absolute Power? Uh, um, that is. That is <laughs> sorry. Yep. Drink, swallow. You can, you can drink. <laughs> no, no. I know. I know. Um, uh, I'm drinking on camera. I know, I know. I'm bluffing because I'm, I'm freezing on Andrew's name. Oh my God, I'm just this horrible. Oh brother, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to put you in a bad uh, but position. Boy, did you put me on a spot, son of a Crap. bitch. God, you know, Mark, I'm telling you, I'm I'm I I blunk on names. I can't tell you how many times doing interviews. It's like, uh, uh. So I, I hear you. I'm just. I'm so Andrew Marino. Oh great, Andrew Marino. Andrew, okay. I'm, Andrew, I'm really sorry. Andrew, I know your name, and I know who you are, and I'm sorry. But if you remember the Legion of Superheroes, I would remember your name instantly. Uh, and Mike, I agree with you. you're a real person, I'm going to forget that. So go ahead, John, I'm sorry. I was going to say, uh, I agree with Mike Jones. Uh, Amanda's uh, characterization in Justice League Unlimited had a great take on Waller. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It sounds like Mark is writing a similar fan. Yeah, CeCe Pounder, uh, yeah. the wonderful uh, uh, character actor, was yeah. a fantastic Waller. And really brought the right voice. Not that um, uh, Pam Greer wasn't great on Smallville as a right. version of Amanda Waller as well. We've been very lucky with our 
Amanda Waller. So yes. right now I'm blanking on was it was it Viola Davis that um yeah was in the Snyderverse says Waller and everything and the Peacemaker show yeah 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 and the of course and the Peacemaker yeah. show yeah 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 very excited man uh all right and Breedall is on Facebook giving us like all the uh, uh, I guess probably what's in previews in terms of uh, where the, the absolute power is going to be reflected. Great. So Thanks. yeah, Green Arrow, Green Arrow 13, Suicide uh, Squad, Dream Team 4, Superman 15, Superman 15 so yep. leads, yep. leads directly into this summer's absolute power. And there's a countdown to absolute power uh, as well coming. So tie-ins. Yeah. Okay. This is Very actually cool. news to me. That's okay. Good to know. Um, Thanks, how much? How much in concert, you know, because I'm, I'm glad you mentioned everybody. By the way, right now, and I've said this before, and I mean this, I think both companies are really well represented with the writers and artists they have. But given that your your home right now is DC, um, yeah, it is so great to uh, to really see everybody firing and and really, you know, giving us really great stories and everything. I think it's a great time right now as far as a, for a reader. I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast going through my comps every month. I really am. Um, you know who you know whose books I really love is my editor Andrew Marino. He's such a good guy. This is every, every, it's like every episode you're going to, you're going to stump the band once per episode by making me name somebody who I should know, like the back of my hand and I'm going to freeze. Whereas, you know, whereas I can tell you all of crypto's ancestors by name. And, and again, this is why I love you. That's fantastic. Um, you know, I was talking to Mark Laming the other day or Laming, pardon me. Yeah. And, um, and I was asking him, um, you know, uh, about some, th you know, dream things that he'd want to do. And he's like, I would kill to do a Savage Land Marvel story. And he goes, they're just like, you know, the numbers aren't there to justify it. And, of course, I remember your fantastic case, our story that you did uh, with uh, one of the Kubert brothers, Adam. Andy. 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 Yeah. It cool. Was so good. I mean, Andy, Andy just brought the heat. It, that came from Andy. Andy, Andy's, Andy says, you know, we, we he left Captain America. He's like, what do I want to do next? He says, I, why don't we do Kazar? And I'm like, that is the stupidest idea I've ever heard because Kazar doesn't sell. And I have no empathy for Kazar whatsoever because I am Fraser Crane. I am the guy who dusts his chair off before he sits down. And this is the guy who swings in the jungle and there's a loincloth. This is not my world. But we sat down. We talked about it. I found some things that I could key into. And uh, we ended up making a book that was really fun. It was really fun. And I, it's still in trade paperback. I encourage people out there to go grab it. it I love beautiful. it. Yeah. I, it, is, it is gorgeous. And again, this is what I love about you, Mark. You really, I remember when you and Rucka were doing that Spider Man Punisher Daredevil story. Yeah. And you're yeah. like, I, I don't know how to get into the Punisher. And, right. you know, whether it was conversations with Greg, or whatever you guys found a way, and it was a hell of a story. And I, I think that's that's amazing. I, um, you know, it's weird, and I want your comment on this real fast because I know we're we're up against time. Uh, I, I, I think Frank Castle might be the very first character mm -hmm. to be to suffer cancel culture, and I understand the timing of it, right? And I understand what happened. And in fact, I just had David Pepos on to talk about the new Punisher that Marvel's created. But then yeah. I read that Born Again is going to have Frank Castle in it, the Netflix TV <laughs> adaptation. One step forward, one step back. Okay. I guess. And yeah, yeah. I just, you know, yeah, any any thought, because my thing is, and I always say this, it's like they're fictional characters. I, I mean, the Punisher should be scary. I do understand that it's not great when the character's uh, symbolism is co-opted, that, that's, the issue. that's the issue as much as anything else that and and basically you know there's a difference between web shooters and m16s you know and then and, and the culture of gun violence has gotten so horrific in this country that you know i can't speak for marvel i can but i can speak to conversations i've had in rooms you know maybe this is not the best foot forward for us at this time is it uh, to to make everything about who can shoot the most bullets, the fastest, but also, and you hit upon this is that that Punisher symbol is co-opted by some truly, truly dreadful groups of people and in enormous numbers, not the kind of thing you can ignore, you know, and if, if Superman's emblem became, became the standard emblem of the neo-Nazis tomorrow, then I don't know what DC would do, but they'd have to do something, you know? 
understood, understood. Back to the Kazar thing. Yeah. Is there that kind of C or D level character that if DC or Marvel were like, hey, whatever you want to do, Mark is fine ah. with us. Is you know, yeah. Is there you know, as I, I think the last time we talked, I was telling you, uh, Ultra the Multi Alien was yeah. uh, in my in my brain of of late and stuff. So yeah, is there some character on that level? I got that, my uh, list. I mean, I I think that uh, <laughs> I, I think that Metamorpho is clearly on that list. From all the Metamorpho jokes I make, um, I think there's something there. I think that there's something to a lot of these characters that it just, again, it's just fun to spelunk. I've got a, I've got a wish list. And when I first started world's finest with Dan, I just sat down and went through all the who's who's and went through all my comics and just made a giant list of here's the people I want to see in this book at some point or another. Understood. Understood. That's uh, ugh, I'm looking at the chat here to see if there's anything else real fast because we're at our hour and uh, we should go. I, I, yeah. It's not even, Steel steel door is not going to shut or anything. It's All right. Like, well, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, it's it smart. It's not going to be boom and boom and it's. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can, but we can, we can write it out naturally. If there's anybody else who has anything in the comments that could be addressed, if not, well, well, God bless you, Cliff. Thank you. Yeah, there you go, man. No, somebody uh, giving Mark props and Dan for uh, World's and Finest. Dan. Absolutely. So that's cool. Speedsy uh, is in, I assume, Australia. Good day, mates. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, hey, Recognizer Arcade, I don't know what else you would call it, but he goes, cancel culture, really? What a clownish remark. Well, I don't know what else you would call it, but that is, I am I am labeling that. And again, as we were just discussing, I understand the thing, and I and I just find it interesting. That is not my judgment right. either way on right. Marvel making that choice. I just think it's interesting. I, You know, for what it's worth, you can't say this, but I'll say this. John is a stand-up guy who is – you know, a, a die in the world liberal guy with, you know, who, who is not the kind of person to bitch about cancel culture, doing this or that or whatever. We were using it in a different context and in a context that was actually pretty accurate. I mean, yes, in terms of what people perceive cancel culture to be. Yeah. Then the, the Punisher was probably the first comic book victim of that. Yes. But again, neither you nor I would ever use that term, cancel culture, because it's it's crap. It doesn't really mean anything. No, although people are victims of uh, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. Of, you know, that condition. I mean, good Lord, you know, um, God, Trina Robbins passed. And I'm so the way, Holy smokes. Did she? You're kidding me. Live well, on it. It's just this breaking news. Oh, she's social, on. Yes, on social media, I already saw the tributes coming out. And oh, we were all heartbroken. She had she suffered that stroke. The last I had heard, she was still not able to speak, but was doing better. Oh. But, you know, up there. So I got to I hope if I'm incorrect, I apologize, everybody. But uh, I was shocked to to see that news. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's pour one out for Trina. I mean, she was a pioneer in underground comics. She was yeah. an exemplary artist. She was a terrific writer. She was a trailblazer for women in comics in the 70s. And her love for comics and her understanding of the history of women in comics in particular, female characters and female creators is unrivaled. I mean, I can't, I can't touch that. You know, he's, she knows stuff that I've never heard and new stuff that I've ever heard. And she, and I had some delightful conversations about that and it was always a joy to speak to her because I always learned something. So I agree, yeah. man. Yeah. I, I never had her on the show but I would see her in lobbies and, yeah. and uh, you know, after hours at cons, her and Steve Lalo, her, her wonderful partner. Yeah. And I, God, my heart goes out to Steve, too, because we're yeah. uh, two of the nicest people in comics. Agreed. Uh, they were incredible. Uh, I think Salkowitz is confirming it. He said that's why I was late to the chat. The chat. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's rough. Um, conventions uh, for you coming up. I know I'll see you at Terrificon in August. You see me in Terrificon in August going to uh, – if you're going to be in the neighborhood of Stockholm, Sweden – at the end of this month, if you're going kind to of dropping by, uh, I'll be at a show there. Uh, Great the the month. Uh, my first time in Stockholm. Going to be a lot of fun. Uh, got Oklahoma City coming up. Um, cool. In May, you know what? We're going to go. Let's look at the calendar, shall we? Let's look at the calendar. Why not? Look Indeed. at the calendar. We've got Stockholm at the end of this month. We have, we have Oklahoma City at the end of May. We have uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania, at the end of June. Okay. <laughs> we have San Diego at the end of July, obviously. We have Terrificon in August. 
Uh, we got uh, Baltimore in September. And then, <laughs> and then I get to rest for a couple of months. But yes, I'll be hitting That's the That's Yeah. Well, and I'm glad Europe is getting a, a taste of Mark Wade. That's fantastic. <laughs> so, to, so to speak, yes. I love it, man. Well, dude, yeah, as always, you're, you're generous with your time. You know I love just talking comic BS. I mean, I, yeah, you know, we always pump the product, and rightfully so. Yeah. And that's good. But no, it's uh, it's it's when we do our Uber nerd uh, conversations that I get excited for, and we talk about uh, crypto and uh, the other. What was the name of the 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 super dog group that crypto uh, didn't he lead a, a group the, of the Space Canine Patrol agents? You yes. still seen? I know, shame. I know, man. I'm letting you down. You are the chess master, sir. I am but a student. You know that. <laughs> I just said that to my buddy Rob Burnett, who's like that with Star Trek and everything. It's like, no, no, no. I'm the student. You're the master and everything. <laughs> So that's great, man. I, uh, good Lord. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, indulging me in this uh, Wolverine conversation. My, my pleasure. And I'm going to go uh, off and now and do some work for my fabulous editor, Andrew Marino. And uh, I will talk to you soon, brother. Sounds great, man. Mark Wade, everybody. Thank you. Um, we might do an All Yet Comics podcast tomorrow with Art and Franco. I'm hoping. Trying to gather the boys together for a new chat. Um, other, and then uh, Friday afternoon, talking to Hitch. Brian Hitch, uh, we'll be doing that midday to accommodate his UK schedule and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, look for a time and uh, and uh, specifics Friday afternoon. And I hope everybody can join us. Great crowd, great conversation from everybody. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Until next time, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Mm -hmm.